All right, now I'm gonna admit it. I'm a throwbagger. But in this video, I'm gonna make one of those air cannons to launch these babies up and over just about anything. Now from what I've seen online, a lot of people use a piece of pipe close at both ends for the uh, air chamber, for the pressurized air chamber. And I like that, but I've got some, you know, like air tanks and stuff around uh, fire extinguishers. We got this uh, CO2 tank. Now I'm gonna go for the big tank just because that just looks kind of crazy and high pressure or whatever. But if you do end up going with a fire extinguisher, you just basically take the tip off, unscrew it, and then it's full of chemicals and stuff. So you just gotta dump this thing out. Same deal, just unscrew the plastic part. Once you depressurize, you know, you gotta make sure your pressure's out. So give it a squirt or two. All right, so here's all the stuff I'm gonna use to make this uber ball chucking cannon. This is a inch and a half PVC. This is gonna be for the barrel. This is just to like direct the throw bag when it's blasting through the, through the air. I got my tank. This is a, how big is this? I think it's about two gallons. Big old steel tank. You can use anything to pressurize it. Like I said, fire extinguisher, you can make your own tank, whatever. I got my throw bag. I'm gonna be launching these little 10 ounce guys. So you know, they fit in my tube but not like too tight. Like I got a little bit of slide there. Then I got some valves. I'm not sure which one I'm gonna use, but basically these guys are Schrader valves that I'll put on my tank. I got some pipe dough, the old fat ball valve. Uh, then I just have a bunch of adapters and stuff. This will adapt to my PVC for my barrel. All right, I put the leg clamp on that. I think that's plenty tight. So I was thinking maybe like quarter inch thick, something like that. <laughs> yeah, we're in about a quarter. No, maybe an eighth. We got a little ways to go. And what I did is I just uh, practiced on some PVC with my tap just to make sure I had a match on the threads. It's basically threaded. It's just a little bit left at the bottom. But uh, I, think if I'll, I think I'll just see if it'll screw in like that. It'll be enough thread to hold it. Yeah, if you needed to, you could, uh, you know, like glue this thing in place, JB weld it, epoxy it. You could pretty much do anything just to keep this baby sealed. But I think I'm gonna get a good bite thread on thread. So I'm just putting a little pipe dope on here. 
There we go. I'm gonna see if that holds air. You know, that's only screwed in like a quarter of the way, but I'm just gonna see if it holds air. Seems pretty good. Um, we go for a pressure test. Bring it up to, I don't know, 20. Yeah, it's holding at 20. That's 20, 40, that's 80, that's 90. All right, so we got 90 pounds in there. Got my valve stem just like a quarter of the way in. But you know, it seems like it's pretty dang tight. That's 90. Did I say 90? Yeah. Let's see what 90 is like air-wise. All right, I think we're ready to put the barrel on here and give this baby a test drive. And you shouldn't really do that. PVC is like super toxic. And if you're stressing about these PVC connections, you know, like you've never glued up PVC or whatever, don't really worry about it. Um, everything here is not really pressurized. This is just the barrel. So all you need it to do is stick. You know, it doesn't really need to be like sealed or anything like that. Just because, you know, the pressurized parts back here, this is all just blast tube. I mean, you don't want air just pouring out of it, but it doesn't need to be like, you know, pressure tight fitting or whatever. Half inch to three quarter then from three quarter up to inch and a half. Inch and a half is nice for these little Stein 10 ounces. You know, like not perfectly tight, but also not loose. I think they're gonna work pretty well. All right, so we are gonna go for a friendly in the shop 40 pounds of pressure test fire. Nothing serious, just a simple 40 pounder. All right, 60 pounds of pressure test fire. If that guy's a little bit loose, I could add some wadding to it just to tighten it up, you know, a little piece of paper. All right, 60 pound test fire with a lever extendo to try to get a faster fire. All right, 60 pounds. Fuck. <laughs> All right, uh, yeah, fast lever. Fast lever is where it's at. Oh, there it is. How are we doing, bag? Taking a little bit of a beating here in the shop. Okay, subsequent testing will happen tomorrow at sunrise. Okay, we're out here at the testing grounds this morning. And just to make the test kind of fair, I'm gonna blast these guys at just about a 45 degree angle. We're using the regulation 10 ounce Stein throw bag. I got these things on eBay, like a bunch of them kind of cheap. Instead of trying to measure height, which I don't really have a way to do, I'm gonna measure distance. So we're gonna measure distance blasting, 100 pounds of pressure, 45 degree angle. <laughs> oh. Oh. I hardly feel like I need to measure this thing because the answer is that thing freaking flew forever. Way the heck out there. 
Okay, we're out here around 170 feet. Looking for the bag, 170 feet, I see it. Down here, just past 200 feet. 200 and... Nice, 250 feet. It's like the original Sputnik. All right, let's just pump it up and shoot another one just to see if we're in that 250 range. We got 50 pounds. Now, if you have the option of a compressor or even like an air tank, you know, like a tank of pressurized air, I would go that way. It's kind of a lot of pumping. All right, 100 pounds. All right, we're going for test number two at the strictly 45 degree angle with a quick, quick toss using my cheater. <laughs> I think that might have been farther. You know, I think what happened was that the first time the pressure was like a little low down like around 90 so i think this guy might beat the 250 mark okay 200 and i'm still not even seeing it that's 220 still not seeing it all right there it is and it shot exactly 300 feet on that one so fully cranked up to a legitimate 100 pounds of pressure. That guy is shooting 300 feet at the 45 degree angle of trajectory. All right, let's try to do some aimed tree shots. All right, so we just got a line of locusts here and nothing too big. You know, these are like maybe 70, 80 feet tall, but I'm just gonna shoot for a crotch. Like we'll go for, we'll go for that crotch, right sort of at the top of this guy. See if I can hit it. I don't have a line on the ball, but I'm just gonna see if I can get the ball through the crotch. Yeah, so you know, shooting the ball through the crotch. All right, we got 100 pounds of pressure in the old cannon. <laughs> All right, that concludes my test of the throw bag cannon. As you saw, it's got crazy amounts of power. Like it can really launch that puppy. And that's really what you're looking for, I guess, if you're gonna build an air cannon. You know, you don't want like a wimpy air cannon. You want one that's gonna really bring it. But I would say there's like a couple little just negative things. I'll just put that out there. Uh, two or three. Number one, transporting this thing. I mean, come on. It's, this is like a big old tank. So there's that. There's also pumping it up is like a slight inconvenience. Um, but the other thing that you might not notice, unless you're like a tree person. If you're a tree person, you probably thought of this. But the other thing is that it's almost got a... Uh, a negative in having so much power, like it lacks finesse. Sometimes, now this is your tree, right? Right here. Sometimes you wanna go up over the crotch and then kind of drop back down when you're throwing your bag because you don't want to blast your bag through the crotch and like up into the canopy, grabbing all kinds of branches and seven or eight trees behind it before your bag comes down. So, so, this guy is not really all about finesse. I guess you could dial in your air pressure so you knew 75 feet was 60 pounds of pressure and you could just lob it right over the top. You could do that. But if you're gonna pump it high, you know, you're gonna go for your 100 pounds, you're gonna blast, you're gonna send it on smaller trees at least up past the crotch, past your target. And if it's all clear behind, that's cool. But if there's a lot of stuff behind that, you're gonna get ensnared and entangled 
and all those other branches. All right, thanks for checking it out. If you haven't noticed already, I got a bunch of other tree work tools on my channel. I've got like a rope jack video and a tree trolley video and all kinds of other stuff. So check it out. And if you drop a comment down below, I'll be sure to respond.